God bless the speaker's words and bless the hearers too, that after all is said and done, we may believe and do. Did you hear any familiar or striking verses in today's reading? We get to see a very relatable Peter go from being so right to oh so wrong. And this passage is absolutely full of significant and well-known verses. For instance, Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers, you are the Christ. Or how about Jesus saying, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Ties to our hymn that we just sang. And many of you recognize that verse. And of course, we have Jesus' very evocative statement to Peter. Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. How should one go ahead to understand the readings that we've heard today? I'm going to make a suggestion, and we're just going to start it here today in the next couple minutes. Um, but if you want to investigate this passage or any interaction between Jesus and Peter more, I'd suggest you read this passage carefully, make notes of the words that Jesus uses, and then go read the book of 1 Peter. It's only five chapters long. There you can observe evidence that Peter was learning from Jesus' words, and you can see how he applies his lessons to his audience and to us. For instance, in our reading, Jesus teaches that he will be rejected by the elders and chief priests. He tells his disciples to come, take up their crosses and follow him. And then we read in 1 Peter 2 verse 4 that Peter writes, as you come to him, meaning Jesus, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. Can you hear the similarities? It may have taken Peter a while, but he internalized these lessons and passed on what he had learned from Jesus. And if you keep going through the book of Peter, you find example after example of Peter following Jesus' instruction from today to set his mind on things of God and not on things of man. Do you remember from a couple weeks ago on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter suggesting that he build physical tents for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah? Well, if we go back to where we left off in 1 Peter, the next verse, chapter 2, verse 5, says, you yourselves are like living stones built up as a spiritual house. Do you hear the contrast between physical tents and a spiritual house? This is one example of Peter helping us to set our minds on things of God, not on the things of man. And if you further compare today's reading with 1 Peter, you can also find themes of being ashamed of Christ, of a struggle or war for your soul, of suffering, and many more. But for today, let's stick with the theme of thinking about things of God versus thinking of things of man. In the first chapter of 1 Peter, Peter twice talks about gold. Maybe there's nothing more clearly a thing of man than gold. Gold, in addition to being valuable, is also remarkably stable. Well, it can be oxidized and dissolved by some very strong acids. It's at the very extreme non-reactive end of a chemical activity series. It is the most durable substance that Peter would have interacted with. But in 1 Peter, Peter specifically uses gold as an example of something that is perishable. In contrast to the perishable blood of Christ, and our faith in him. So if you're ever tempted to view your bank account rather than your identity in Christ as your source of security, you are setting your heart on things of man, not things of God. If you see your assets, your occupation, and your physical life as temporary things that 
you can use to build eternal relationships among yourself, Christ, and your neighbors, then maybe you are learning some of what Peter is teaching about setting our mind on the things of God. But there's another aspect that we need to address from today's reading. What did Peter learn from Jesus saying to him, get behind me, Satan? If a friend or colleague looked at you and said, get behind me, Satan, what would that do to your relationship? Well, as far as we know, Peter didn't react by arguing back or leaving in a huff. He apparently took this lesson to heart too, because in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9, Peter turns around and warns his readers and us to be watchful because our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. I still might not recommend actually saying, get behind me, Satan, when talking to friends or acquaintances, but we really should learn with Peter to recognize when it's an appropriate thought. Why was it right for Jesus to attribute Peter's words to Satan? After all, Peter claimed to be ready to die for Jesus. And I think that if an assassin came running at Jesus, Peter would have jumped in, risking his life in order to save Jesus. But that's the problem. Peter was willing to die so that Jesus could live. That's backwards. Peter and all of us need Jesus to die to save us. Anything that detracts from Jesus being the crucified and resurrected Son of God is of Satan. So anytime you see a mindset that suggests Jesus doesn't need to die, or that he didn't rise again, or that his death didn't result in the forgiveness of every sin of every person, that mindset comes from Satan. If you hear someone suggest that Jesus was a good teacher, not a resurrected Savior, you should think, and Jesus invites you to pray, get behind me, Satan. You're blocking my view of the cross. If you start to think that you can be good enough on your own, or you think you're not so bad that you don't need a crucified Jesus to forgive your sins every single day, you're invited to say, get behind me, Satan. I can't see my Savior. Or on the other hand, if you start to think that you're so bad or you've done something so awful that Jesus can't or won't forgive you and you try to take that punishment on yourself, you need to say, get behind me, Satan. You're hiding my forgiveness. And if you are tempted not to forgive your neighbor or not to see them as the person for whom Christ died and for whom his forgiveness is offered, you need to say, get behind me, Satan. Jesus calls me to follow him, not you. Anytime Jesus' death, resurrection, and the forgiveness of sins are being bypassed or separated from each other in any way, you should say, get behind me, Satan. I need to see Jesus. But when you see a crucified and risen Savior forgiving your sins and the sins of the world, you should, with your mind on things of God and together with Peter, boldly confess to him, you are the Christ. Amen. We stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another day to serve you and worship you. Please bless us and be with us in the many tasks of the day. 
and give us strength and energy and health for all the things we are called to do. Today, we include special petitions for student Kaylee Huggins and her family. Her aunt passed away today after a long battle with cancer. Gracious Father, for this family and all who mourn, we pray peace in your love and presence. Grant them comfort in their time of loss in the promise of eternal life for their loved one and for all who trust in Jesus as the Savior. We pray also for those in need of healing. For Professor Angie Handel, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Also for Professor Emeritus Randy Ferguson as he recovers from successful heart bypass surgery yesterday. Heavenly Father, for these your servants and for all who look to you for healing, we pray for wisdom and skill for the doctors and all who attend to them, for healing according to your gracious will, and for strength and for comfort in your love and presence in their times of need. We pray also for our school this day. Lord, make us to be fitting of our name, Concordia, where our hearts are together in support of care for each other. Send your spirit among us that our faith is strengthened and we are drawn closer to you in this challenging time. Help us to be faithful in our daily tasks that all we do would glorify you. Bless our administrators and leaders with wisdom and peace as they serve. Hear all these and all the prayers on our hearts and in our minds as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.